Today we're going to talk about a fuel leak. I mean a fuel leaker. A carburetor. That's right, we're going to talk about a carburetor today. If you've been around for a while, you know that all of my videos, I talk about Holly EFI. Love Holly EFI. I have been carbureted for way longer than I have been fuel injected. Three years ago is when I actually switched over to EFI, so I've got a lot more experience with carburetor. So today, I'm gonna give you the basic ins and outs of normal carburetors. All right, check it out, stay tuned. My buddy John, he just got this carburetor from Brian. It's gonna be going on his uh, 5.3 LS motor. Yes, it's gonna be carbureted. So uh, I'm just bringing it over here just to show you guys. So I'm gonna talk about the basic function first of a carburetor, a lot of things, what people miss, when they're messing with a carburetor, when they're trying to tune it, when they're rebuilding it, it's not very difficult to do. There's a lot of things on here. It looks like black magic, but it's not. It really is a fuel leaker. It's a fuel leaker. It's a metered fuel leak. So that's exactly what it is. So I've got some parts and pieces I was able to, able to round up um, as well, kind of to show you. Carburetors are very basic. So of course, the way this carburetor is sitting here, this is your front bowl. So this would be facing forward. Wabba, wabba. If you're not just car, ooh, ooh. okay, so that's gonna be that. So I'm using my handy dandy little straw here. And so everybody knows what this brake clean stuff is. There's lots of different kinds and parts and pieces, but this is perfect for cleaning a carburetor. It's brake clean, it's carburetor cleaner. So it works fantastic. So I'm gonna just point out a couple little things on the carburetor real fast on the basic function. So you got the front of the carburetor here, you got the back of the carburetor here. When you look at it underneath the bottom, you got four four barrels. And that's why you remember the old uh, the old quadra jets. You could hear when the back barrels opened up. So this controls the front. And so it goes here and it pulls and opens the front. And then you got this lever and this lever here. And sometimes you can kink them so that it, it acts a little faster, but it's just a progressive linkage. And so as it gets going, it opens up more and more and more. And then the back barrels eventually open up and now you're wide open throttle. That's flowing everything that the carburetor can flow. And so that's kind of the basic function of a carburetor, pretty easy. Um, this is the choke, of course. They're usually on a cable. So it's just, just as simple as the cable operated. I mean, you pull it and it opens it and then you push it and it closes it. That's for cold weather. We don't race in cold weather a lot. So, I mean, you know, a lot of people just, if you buy an aftermarket carburetor, these things are, it's just already milled off. Somebody has, has milled it and, you know, taking the choke part off of it. Just makes it a little bit more difficult to start when you're, when you're cold. So the way this one is operated as well, now this one has a single fuel line that comes in. So that'll be coming from your, your fuel pressure regulator and it goes in and tees off. Um, right in here in this joint, it comes up to the front bowl and then back to the back bowl. So these are your sight plugs. So these are very important. So when you're setting your, your float level, these things are, you take these out and then usually you bump the car and a little bit of fuel sauce is out, that's the proper level. So you want the, the fuel about to the bottom of this sight plug when it's out, front and the back, and that's with the fuel pump on. And so that is really easy, really, not very complicated. This is a ported vacuum switch, a ported vacuum connector. Most of the time people just put a plug on this. This normally goes over to the distributor and you know, it pulls on that. This, this does not have vacuum at all times. This is something that has vacuum only when it gets to a certain throttle percentage, when air is r rushing through the Venturi. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about that too. And so this one on each side, this is the idle screw. And this is how you adjust your richness and your leanness on the carburetor. So this is the, the basics, uh, you know, you screw it in all the way, and then you come out uh, a half a turn or uh, one and a half turns. You got one on each side. Some of the carburetors have them on the back. You can see it's a four corner idle adjustment. You can see this one does not have the adjustability in the back. Now you still get some fuel in the back, but it's just, it's just set. So it's not adjustable is the biggest thing. This is a vent tube extension. This is a vent tube extension. If you were to plug these up completely, the fuel comes in, no fuel could come out. So you always gotta make sure those things stay nice and clear. So looking down in the carburetor, this is your, your booster. So the air comes through and it uses a Venturi effect. And so what happens with the Venturi effect, you can see, it's really easy to see. 
the air comes down and it's all sloped and scalloped. And then they have a whole bunch of different kind of boosters. These are straight leg boosters. I've got another one over here. This one is a down leg booster. You see how it's, it's down more in the Venturi. So, um, and then you have something called an annular booster. That's your three most common ones. Most people, they put an annular booster when they're doing a blow through carburetor. And I'll show you some pictures of those and you know what they are. But basically when you do a, a carburetor and then of course, the, so the air comes through, this is, I'll go ahead and switch you over to this one. And so the air comes through, it pops through, it starts shrinking down and the Venturi effect, essentially what the Venturi effect is, is when the air goes into a smaller orifice, if it's like a trumpet, so it's bigger out here and it starts shrinking down. And then on the back side, you can see it starts opening up. It's very difficult to see, but way up in there is smaller than this. And so the air speeds uh, start slowing back down. So in this area right here, where this down leg booster is, or in this case where the straight leg booster is, right in that mouth, the air airflow speeds up. It gets really fast. And so what happens is when the airflow gets fast, it just creates a low pressure area. And so that suction is what sucks the fuel out of the bowl. And so you've got a meter and block, which I'm gonna show you some, some in a minute. But basically the fuel is down in this bowl. So it's down in the bowl. You got the meter and block on here. So the fuel is in here. This is your main jets. So it's down here low. And so then it comes up and this is called the main well. And so you can see the jet here, it comes up and then it comes out this little hole here. I have no idea what that is officially called, but that comes out there and then that goes into the big hole where, where the booster is. And so when the throttle linkage kicks open, airflow is coming, it speeds up, it creates that low pressure and it starts sucking fuel. And it's just like a straw, essentially. So it's like a straw when you go to McDonald's or Burger King. You put it down in there, the bottom of it's at the bottom of the cup. You put a suction on it with your mouth. And so the fluid, the liquid, you got a low pressure area in your mouth. And so the atmospheric pressure around you is what pushes, you don't actually pull the fuel up. The atmospheric pressure pushes the the drink into your mouth and it's the same thing with fuel so it's really easy it's really 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 simple but that's why people call them fuel leakers that's exactly what it is it's a fuel leaker and it's a fuel i mean it's a i guess you could call it it's a straw <laughs> i mean but it works that i mean it works whoever thought of it is brilliant so that's kind of the basics of it so i'm going to show you real fast i'm going to jump over here real quick um a little bit more to flow and how these things work the main circuit then you have the idle circuit and then you have the transition circuit. Then you have the, the squirter. This is the throttle. So this is hooked to your gas pedal. It pushes. And so when this opens, when this pushes, this is your squirter arm. So what happens here, this is the squirter on the bottom. And these normally come in 30 cc's. This is a 30 cc pump from the factory. And then you can change on this. There's a, well, there's, there's a, it's hard, it's gonna be really hard to see. Oh no, no, there it is. This is a cam, this is a squirter cam. You see, it's got two holes and then there's three holes actually in the cam and they make a whole bunch of different ones of these. And it's, it's like a camshaft in a car. So as it progresses, it'll progress and then it'll, it'll push the squirter shot here. And so as it pushes the squirter shot, the fuel comes through the metering block. So let's go back to this. So this is your main well, this is, Again, the fuel well is gonna be about right here. This goes here. So this is the, the pump cavity. This is the, the squirter. The way this thing works, the, the bowl. So you see the little ball valve in there? So it, it gravity it normally is down like this. So it gets filled up from the top up here, down in here, gravity flow. Gravity fills this thing up. When the, the pump, when it pumps, when it pumps down, this little ball, this check ball goes up. Some of them have umbrellas. This one doesn't have the umbrella. This one's got the little ball, but they, they have a couple different styles. But basically it's a check valve. So it doesn't allow fuel to go back that way. So then it comes out this hole, which in turn, if you look the way this thing lines up like this, it goes in here, follow it down through the metering block. It comes in the metering block here. It takes this passage and then this passage comes out here and then it goes through here in the, the main body. And then this one comes out here and that's the squirter. 
So when you give it gas, when you initially hit this this throttle and you're you're pumping it, pop, pop, this is what the squirter looks like. So this thing, the fuel comes out of this and that gives you your initial shot. So that's that's one of the circuits. So you got your squirter circuit. So there again, like four circuits. So then next on the list, let's look at this is called the transfer circuit. So I'm gonna show you what the transfer circuit is. So the transfer circuit. Oh, okay, there's the idle circuit that we talked about earlier. The idle circuit is down here. So where we talk about that fuel leak again, you can see this is where the fuel leaks out of the carburetor when the blades are shut. So that's how the fuel gets into the engine when these blades are sh shut. It's just literally dripping down there. It's, it's sucking it out, uh, you know, because there's vacuum in the motor. So that's how it's doing this. But going back to the transfer circuit. So if you look down, down here, right it's kind of difficult to see right here you see that slot that that slot goes down a pretty good ways it goes down all the way almost to where this point is here so let's see if I can get a close-up of the transfer circuit okay you can kind of see it it's a slot down there and so basically you can see when the throttle is closed the front one that slot should look about like a square. So it's getting a little bit of fuel from there too. And the back one has got the same thing, but it's gonna be covered up. You want that blade all the way closed. So all your fuel is coming from the idle circuit and that little bit of transfer circuit. So you hit the squirter, you hit the, the, the throttle and the squirter squirts. And then as this starts moving, this starts exposing more of the slot of the transfer circuit. So what's gonna happen at this point is the fuel is going to start coming out of here and so then so you got the squirter circuit idle circuit transfer circuit they're starting to supplement and then somewhere in this range i don't know where exactly then the venturi effect kicks in so you start getting enough airflow that is going through the venturi to start pulling fuel through the main jets and so then it starts, like I was saying earlier, it comes through the main jets, goes up through the main wells. And then when it gets up through the main wells, then it goes through here and then it starts coming out the booster. And this all happens really fast. The breather off of it and you walk the throttle, pretty quickly you'll see fuel come, come out of these boosters. You'll see it first come out of the squirters and then it'll come out of the boosters right thereafter. And if this is not all timed correctly and sized correctly and adjusted correctly, sometimes you'll hit it and it'll back backfire back through the intake. Well, pop, it'll throw a little fireball out. That usually means that, okay, well, it's a little bit too lean in the squirter circuit or the transfer circuit. So you need to make a squirter change. You need to go from a 28 or a 31 up to maybe a 35 size. So there's a whole bunch of different ways you can tune this stuff out. Um, so the so that's the way the fuel flows. And then once you go wide open throttle, you know, the back barrels are open. And then when the front barrels and the back barrels are open, you know, probably 98% of your fuel is coming through the main circuit at that point. Now, you're probably still getting a little bit of fuel from the, from the idle and the transition, but as small as that stuff is restricted down, it's not going to be a lot. So that's where your big jetting comes in play. That's where your changes into jetting make a difference. That's how jetting the carburetor is, is, is different. So that's your, that's it. That's the basic fuel flow through a carburetor and how a carburetor works. So you see these, these squirters here, they're gone. There is a little needle valve that's, that's down here. And that's a, there again, it's just a check valve so that it, it allows it to come up but not go out. Um, something else you need if you're gonna be tuning a lot on a carburetor, this is a very wore out edition of a, a Holly jet kit. And uh, you can see what I did to mine, I sized mine. There again, I was carbureted forever. So these numbers do not actually represent the size of the orifice. So these are actually what the size of the orifices are when you measure them out. So. I don't know who come up with this idea. Uh, I would have thought the numbers would have actually, you know, been like, okay, well, if it's a 79, it'd be a 79 orifice. And it starts off that way up here at the top. You can see it's pretty close up there. I mean, it's exactly right. And I guess the numbers, I guess what they mean is it's the flow. So in order to get more flow, they had to, to, to change the numbers. And that's interesting right there, 80 to 81. 
is the exact same and an 82 is the same. So you can see, and then it jumps, it just, it just makes a big, big jump. And then it's very minor sometimes. So, I mean, it's just, it's crazy how this works out sometimes. But uh, so, and this is flow and that's what the jet numbers are. It's looking for a percentage of flow. Anytime I made a change when I was making carburetor change, I would move two numbers. I started off trying to move one number and I couldn't see enough of a change to go one number at a time. So I would change, you know, two at a time, two in the front, two in the back. Um, and you see, I've got, this is just the years of my um, experimenting and carburetor stuff. And I still use it for, um, you know, small tools now. There's a, somewhere in here, there is a uh, Allen wrench for my my adjustability for my, um, for my transmission. This is the pump cam, like I was talking about. It's just one of the adjustable ones, and you can you can see the profile is a little bit different. It, it hits real hard right there, and then if it was turned this way, it'd be more gradual. Um, there's a, a pink cam, and, they, and that's why they're color-coded. And you can buy those, you can get them pretty cheap. Right down in here is that valve that I was talking about, the little needle valve. That's the, the little needle valve that is under the squirter. Real small, real simple. If, if if the squirter is off, if you've got the squirter off and then you press this arm or go like that, this is going up and it's gonna go into your motor. Ask me how I know. Uh, it will go down in there and then you gotta, hopefully it'll get lucky and get caught on a, uh, in the bottom of the intake. These are um, screw-in jet extensions. This is the thing that's got a little bit of everything. This is a high flow power valve. The way you can tell the high flow power valves is they've got four, ports on it i think this one's a quick fuel and the reason i slotted this is because i was doing some experimenting i wanted to make sure my valve was not possibly getting pushed closed under boost pressure this is a high flow power valve you can see these are very wobbly a standard flow one see how it's only got it only has two ports and it's got the ridges in it. it's not quite as wobbly and this one and all of these power valves are the same They've all got different ratings on them and they're vacuum stamped. They have different springs and you can see these things screw down. And so that's how they adjust them. So they put a spring on it and then they put a, a, a suction on it. If it's a 6.5 power valve, then that would mean at 6.5 inches of vacuum, the spring overcomes the vacuum and it pops open. And it probably is more of a gradual opening, but that's simply, you know, how those power valves work. Very simple, very easy to do. Uh, let's see if there's what else is good in here. That's an old spare nozzle that I done. Now this is something that is trick that I, back in the day, I was trying to come up with a boost reference power valve. There's a couple companies out there now that sell these. They sell them. I didn't ever get to, to actually play with it much though. It was, um, there's a, see that moves right there. Shoot, I don't even remember what I got this thing off of. I, there again, I did a lot of thinking and a lot of trying to figure this out. And this would work for sure. It's closed and then boost pressure would simply push on this and then it opens up and then it lets fuel go through the cavity and then in there. I don't know, I don't remember what this thing was. It was a modified, some type of modified check valve that I did. But anyway, so that's something that I, I had worked on at some point. Anyway, this is something that is critical. Small toolbox. The Holly Jet Kit. Do any carburetor adjustment? You need to get a kit. You need to get the adjustable jet kit so you can play with it. Now let's see if I can get it to shut again. I don't know if it's going to shut or not. Okay, there you go. So we're going to put this one in. Okay, so um, get you uh, a kit. Another thing I wanted to touch on real quick is up here in the top of the carburetor. All carburetors have these. You got these little holes here. These are your air bleeds. Typically on the aftermarket. These are adjustable, but on the outside corners here, these are your idles. So you can see these are a little bit bigger. And you see, this is a drastic difference between this one and this one. But these are calibrated at the factory. This, I don't know, those may have been butchered out by somebody else at some point. But this one is, this one's for the idle and transfer circuit. And this one is for the high speed, which is the fuel through the main jets. But always make sure when you're cleaning a carburetor, you got these are, are open, and they, these are the, the two holes that are beside here. High speed, low speed, or idle is what those are. And these look like a bunch of holes. Most of them are casting holes. These things are pretty simple, pretty easy. Another thing, what we were just talking about, is in the metering block itself. So the air 
is what comes down through through this channel right here when this metering block when this metering block butts up against this you can see right here this is where the air comes in so this is the air that goes over to main wells and so when this goes into the main wells you look you think oh well that's a huge hole that's not the case down there at the very bottom it is very small like very 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 small you're not gonna be able to see down in there and so you can spray it out with this and that's why they make them all this size but those are adjustable on a lot of carburetors and you can change there's a bunch of theory out there and i could spend probably 30 or 40 minutes talking about what we've done in the past some of these have four and five and it tailors the fuel curve it's just very complicated but the just know that that's what this is this is for the idle or for the high speed air bleeds to mix air into the main fuel flow before it comes out of the booster here and there's also some theory that you know the more air that goes in at some point as long as you've got enough suction that it makes the fuel lighter and you can actually get a richer air fuel mixture so that's often that's an interesting theory as well but anyway so going back to the, the basic carburetor function here power valves so this is the power valve i have no idea what size this one is this 6.5 see it's the stamp so it's a 6.5 vacuum so that strength that spring is pretty strong you can hear it if you had a 2.5 and it that completely depends on the vacuum that your motor has so if your your car has a if it's got a very small camshaft that has a lot of engine vacuum then you'll want to have a higher rated one of these uh if it's got a big camshaft a lot of overlap then you might want one that's a two and a half or one and a half because the motor just doesn't have much vacuum so one of the critical things too this is the seal of course this thing just screws right on here i've had a track day end because i did not put this on correctly I always turn it upside down like this and then screw it in there. And then, you know, it just comes right on through. And then you can see that gasket is 100% secure. So going back to this metering block here. So this right here is the cavity that the power valve goes in. So when that goes in there through the main body and through the base plate, this right here is what holds, that's how it gets vacuum into the, the power valve channel to do that. So if that thing is cocked over to the side, if you're in a hurry and it gets cocked over to the side like that, guess what's gonna happen? You've got fuel in here, it leaks through, it goes into this, it doesn't go out here. So when you're looking down in the carburetor, it doesn't look like it's flooding. And you're like, I don't understand where all the fuel's coming from. It's just getting sucked right into the motor right here. So that, you know, is something that you have to be careful of. So, okay, let's talk about real quick about jetting. Carburetor jetting and why it's important. So when you buy a carburetor, it's set with a certain CFM, 650, 750, 850, 950. That is the airflow combined with, with the fuel flow. So generally, the more airflow this thing flows, the bigger the port is, the round, the Venturi. So the bigger the booster has to be, so the more, more jet you have to put in it. Because to get the air fuel ratio right, if you flow more air, now you need more fuel to go in the motor. If you don't have more fuel going in the motor, then it's lean and it doesn't work properly. So jetting, when you get a carburetor, when you buy one, when you buy one from a professional, from Holly or, I don't know if Barry Grant's still in now or um, any of these companies that sell carburetors, they are calibrated for the proper fuel flow. So you'll have, say, an 80 jet in the front. So you might have an 80 jet in the front and a 90 jet in the back. Most, okay, let's go to what they normally do for like a 650 or 750. I can't remember exactly the numbers, but 70 in the front and then an 80 in the back. So you go, oh, well, there's a 10 spread. I don't understand. Why is there a 10 spread between the two? So you, you forgot about the power valve. So this right here is the power valve channels down here. So when the fuel, when the power valve opens, this channel here, it goes into the main well. So this goes into the main well. So it goes into the main well over here and then it fills up, it gives you the additional fuel. So it's closed so that you can, the power valve is normally cl normally closed when you, you're cruising, when you're under vacuum, when you're going down the road. And that's how you get the good air fuel ratios and you don't burn a ton of gas. Now, when you get on it, when you give it gas, the power valve pops open. It gives this additional fuel through these these power valve circuits, or PVCRs, uh, power valve channel restrictors is what this is called. And so that's how you get your extra flow. So in theory, 
A lot of people just simply take out this. They go, oh, I'm taking that power valve out. It's a piece of crap. So if you take the power valve out, you got to give it more fuel. So in theory, if you take the power valve out, you put a plug in here. Now you have disabled the power valve circuit. So when you disable the power valve circuit, now the carburetor is not going to be balanced anymore. So you need to increase the jet in the front. So you would have 80 squared. So 80 in the front, 80 in the back. Now it's going to be perfect in theory. Uh, so it's going to be terrible when you're cruising down the road because it's going to be burning the fuel of an 80 jet instead of a 70 jet. Uh, it's going to make all your uh, people behind you go, man, that thing is flooded. That's why we need EPA standards so that that we can get those gas guzzling things off the road. They're partially right, I guess. But um, so anyway, so that's the way the jetting works. Now, okay, so this is your basic fu function with the, the jetting. The way the jetting works, the way you get it balanced from the front to the back. So generally, there's always going to be um, an 8 to 10 spread as long as you got a power valve. I always like to run power valves. Power valves are always good. They make it cleaner in the burnout box. They make it cleaner running down the return road. They make it cleaner if you drive it any. A lot of people don't like power valves, and, you know, that's okay. But just make sure if you take the power valve out, understand you need to have square jetting front to back. Now, one of the things I see people do all the time, too, I'm going to go over real quick, is they take over here, we got a vacuum secondary carburetor. So, you know, we talked about a little bit earlier about how these things, they pull. And so you can see this one right here, the vacuum, it's not pulling. It's vacuum operated on the secondary. So the motor, the, the engine, it senses the vacuum and then it pulls this open and it's got to be wide open throttle. And then it pulls the back barrels open and that's how you do it. So, so one of the things that, and that made a funny noise. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so you can see this one, it just goes through the arm and it completely opens, but it stops it from opening if the back, if the front barrel is not open. Whereas the double pumper, it automatically pulls on it and it opens the back barrels. So remember what I said earlier, what's the difference between this one and the other one? There is no squirter back here. So I have seen in the past, people will take a screw and they, they call it the, four man, the, the poor man's double pumper and they'll stick a screw right here and so as you start pulling that, boom, it gets there and they'll take the, the choke off of it over here, block all the, the, the ports off of it, and then it opens like a double pumper. But remember, when it does that, you don't have the squirter in the back. So now when this thing starts opening, remember that dead area we were talking about. You don't have the squirter there to, to make up for the dead area. And it might be okay, but most of the time, anytime I've seen people try it, as soon as that cracks open without the squirter, boom, it backfires because it's lean. It doesn't have enough fuel. Now you could crutch it. If you put a great big squirter up here in the front uh, and it's you know pretty rapid to where it's a mostly one-to-one -one where it pulls pretty quick, then you could probably crutch it through and it might work okay, but it's not the right way. It's not the, the best way to do it. So this is your needle and seats here. They make a whole bunch of different ones. So this is how you adjust it. Basically, this is your float here. And this thing goes in there. The fuel comes in from the side. Fuel comes in from this side. And this you can see your port here, needle and seat. And it just goes down in here. And when the floats down, it lets uh, fuel into the bowl. And then when the fuel comes up, it shuts the seat. It's really simple. I don't have a, I don't have a needle and seat in my package, but they're very simple. Just um, Google search uh, poly carburetor needle and seat. All right, guys. Will y'all like, comment, and subscribe? I am going to do another video talking about how to make this all blow through. If you were doing that, we'll see y'all next time. Go fast and get some wind lights. Thanks.